What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Hurricane Idalia is continuing to bear down across Georgia and the Carolinas as we speak. It is currently an 80 mile per hour system that has caused major, major damage in the Big Bend in Florida. It made landfall this morning as a Category 3 hurricane with winds of 125 miles per hour. However, just before it made landfall, it reached its peak intensity at Category 4 strength with winds of 130 miles per hour. However, it started to undergo an eyeball replacement cycle, and then it started, and that's how it weakened, thankfully. However, it doesn't really matter that much if it's 125 or 130 because the result was still very much the same. We had a lot of storm surge going on. There's a lot of search and rescue efforts that are going on as I'm r- talking right now, and the f- and also we had a lot of st- we had a lot of storm surge. Like I said before, I'm not 100% sure how st- much that storm surge was. We'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, watch out for my documentary on this because I am going to be making one. But anyway. Here's the latest from the NHC as of right now, and then we have some other stuff I wanted to go ahead and talk about. So here's the uh, latest public advisory right here. Winds of 80 miles per hour, pressures down to 978 millibars. Um, This is the last hourly tropical cyclone advisory on Idalia. Next intermediate advisory will be issued at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, so that will be in the next hour as I am recording this. So it's either going to stay at 80 miles per hour or it's going to weaken to 75 miles per hour by the time you guys see this. We'll have to keep an eye on it for sure. There is still a lot of also a lot of flash flooding that has been reported with this. There is a lot of flash flood warnings Right now in Georgia, we're going to go ahead and show you those on radar scope. There's a lot of flash flood warnings due to Idalia right here. And I'm not surprised, honestly, because of how much rain is falling. So here's the flash flood warning. Uh, Already, we're looking at uh, one to a half to three inches of rain have already fallen in a lot of these areas. And NHC and NWS did say this is going to be a very big threat, so they weren't lying about that. So definitely something to monitor. Also, the impacts in the Carolinas, as that wind shear continues to increase... The NHC, the NHC, not the NHC, the SPC put out a 10% tornado risk, which means we could see quite a few tornadoes across the North and South Carolina, as well as whatever is left of Georgia that it has to traverse through. So we'll have to monitor that as time continues to go on. Uh, as time continues to go on, right? Once again, 80 mile per hour trop, uh, uh, tropical system. It's a lot to really take in at this point. So all I'm gonna say is, well. I might be going back to Florida in a few months for another service trip, and I'll leave it at that. Even still, storm surge is still expected to be about 7 to 11 feet as of right now. It's going to take a a while for the water to recede. Uh, Storm surge of 3 to 5 feet from uh, Savannah, Georgia, all the way to the South Santee River in South Carolina. So that's still a very big threat as we continue into tomorrow and we continue into into Friday. Storm surge still of one to three feet and two to four feet in North Carolina. Although I'm more concerned about the flood threat and the and the wind threat and maybe even the tornado threat if that shear can get to that in time. So we'll have to definitely monitor that as time continues to go on. However, I'm also paying attention to another new threat that is brewing in the main development region. And I think this tweet sums it up perfectly. Idalia is the main focus right now for obvious reasons, but it's worth noting that today's Euro Ensembles light up the MDR next week with several members sending storms of Category 4 and Category 5 in intensity into the western part of the basin in the long range ladies and gentlemen that's what we're going to be focusing on for the next part of the video i know ideally is very important but we also have to pay attention to new threats that are going to be emerging in the tropical atlantic and this looks like one of those right here so here's what we have going on, and we're going to go ahead and kind of talk about this because even the European, uh, f- uh, even the European um, operational is showing that as well. Well, at the zero Z, we'll go ahead and show you the, uh, the the operational right here. Here's the operational right here. Starting about, I'd say about four days out, a tropical wave emerges off the coast of Africa, and it already starts to rapidly organize and intensify. The Europeans already going down to around a Category 1 hurricane on the operational as this thing approaches the either uh, either the Caribbean or stays just north in the Atlantic ba- uh, Basin. But either way, we, this is a huge threat we need to monitor as, more, as this could potentially impact the Caribbean Sea, could potentially impact the Antilles, and we need to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. 
So that's the European operational. We'll also show you a few others. We'll show you the GFS to kind of see what they're thinking about this. GFS operational, similar situation. Has this set down to a Category 1, then Category 2 hurricane as time continues to go on, although it has it m missing the Antilles, but it always has a bit of a northward bias on that. So we'll have to wait and see what that Bermuda or Azores high does to this system because that's its steering current. But still a threat to basically watch. The CMC run, we'll go ahead and show you that as well. CMC is also pushing this very far to the north. Although I don't entirely trust that it's going that far north that early out. Primarily due to the steering currents and all the other conditions listed above. So a lot of these models are calling for tropical development. And after I th what we saw with Idalia and Franklin, I think we need to pay very extra uh, attention to this. Since we're getting into the peak of hurricane season from September 1st to September 20th is the peak of hurricane season, ladies and gentlemen. So this is something we absolutely need to monitor as time continues to progress. So we're going to go ahead and show you what's working for and against it. What's easily working for this development is the global sea temperatures continuing to warm up, especially in the main development region. We're getting 28, 29, 30 plus degrees Celsius in a lot of these areas over here. That's 86 plus degrees Fahrenheit across a lot of these areas in the main development region. That's a, a big concern for me. Also, the OHC, even though ideally it did suck up a bunch of the Western Caribbean Sea stuff right here. It's still very untapped over here in the main development region and in the Eastern Caribbean Sea if this thing does meander in there. So that's also a huge concern of mine is we're looking at area, areas of well over 150 OHC still in a lot of the in a lot of the Caribbean Sea and parts of the MDR. So that's also another threat to monitor as we continue to pay attention to this. What's working what may be working against it in the long term is the wind shear, but for now I'm not too worried about uh, about development with the shear. The shear looks incredible is incredible for development, especially in this western main development region and in parts of the Caribbean Sea. Even after Idalia moved through there just a bit ago, and I want to go ahead and check the Eastern Atlantic to kind of see this. There is a bit more shear that's currently impacting parts of the MDR, but that's expected to fluctuate off and on, off and on through the rest of hurricane season. So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. So now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear and wind forecast brought to you by the European run right here. Here is the zero Z uh, shear forecast. So this wave is coming off of the coast of Africa right now. That's uh, this uh, 4060 uh, uh, area right here tagged by the NHC. But there is another wave coming right after that that the euro was paying attention to. So we'll focus on that with the shear. As soon as this thing comes uh, comes off, the shear in, across the main development region weak, reaching weakens considerably. So that's already a red flag right there. So let's go ahead and check the moisture and the relative humidity. That's also another red flag right there. That's a, a huge and very robust moisture pocket, and it is surrounded by some dry air. But if, as long as it stays in that moisture pocket, it's going to have no issues organizing or developing. And, and uh, really, any of these systems won't have that much of an issue doing that. But we'll go ahead and continue to monitor it. the shear. It does appear that it will increase in the in the long term. However, I'm not too concerned about that. that. Part of that may be inflow and outflow. So we'll have to wait and see as time continues to progress. Last thing we're showing you is the ensemble run of this because European ensembles continue to pull out a lot of scenarios and they are absolutely shocking right here. So a lot of the ensembles are calling for hurricane strength in the all throughout the main development region right here. These are like th I'd say about 20 to 30 ensembles out. So this is something something we need to monitor and a lot of these have it impacting anywhere on the Antilles right here whether it's the Leeward or Windward Islands, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, the Bahamas, all those areas right here and look how concentrated all these scenarios are even nine days out so this is a huge threat we need to monitor going in the long term. We'll continue to update you here in the Pat's Path Predictor channel. We're closing the video out right here. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out. Helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day guys. Stay safe.